Jeez. Oh my gosh. I don't. Welcome back, super friends and super family. I am Thor, your friendly neighborhood god of thunder. Today I'm reacting to Atonement. So I've been doing a few more serious drama movies, a lot of them relating to things around World War II. This is one that won the vote on Patreon. Um, I don't know much about it. I I'm pretty sure that James McAvoy and Kieran Knightley are in this movie, and there's some star-crossed lovers type of thing going on, um, and that's it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure this is a World War II romantic drama. I guess that's that's what I believe this movie is generally about, but as far as details, plot, where this movie goes, I don't know, and I don't know if this leans into the romance side of things more, the historical type of things. I'm pretty sure it's not based off a true story, but I could be wrong. I, like usual, I don't like looking up the movies ahead of time. I don't want to know like the Rotten Tomatoes score or you know figure out any plot points. I want to go in as blind as possible, but I'm very excited to check this one out. I have heard some good things about it, so I'm excited to check it out and just a nice change of pace here as well. But as always, if you want to watch the full unedited reaction to this movie, all my movies are up on Patreon. Thank you to everyone who supports there. But for now, let's get into the reaction. A ton I'm excited to see Kira Knightley in this as well, because I know her from the Pirates movies, which of course I just reacted to, but I, off the top of my head, I can't think of a lot of other movies I've seen her in. Oh, Pride and Prejudice, I have seen that. Um, and she's good in both of those things that I've seen her in. Is this going to be about a writer? Okay, I like that. Pretty cool miniature setup, guessing there are kids. I used to literally do set up models with dinosaur toys when I was younger. Is that a painting of the uh, the angel Gabriel? I really like the sound design with the typewriter sound effects. She's so young to be a writer, right? They're like, we're working, okay? We're busy. We can't appreciate your artistic talent. I'm appreciating it though. I'm rooting for her just as a writer. <laughs> I hear you're putting on a play. Who told you? Jungle drums. Jungle drums? What does that mean? Is that an expression I'm not familiar with? Stupendous. It's stupendous. Look at that. She's being supportive. I was worried it was going to be the opposite. So do you think Leon will like it? Well, of course he will. I feel like I know this actress too. I mean, look at that place. Man, I would love to live in, like, a great Gatsby house. <laughs> feel all fancy. What do you think it would feel like to be someone else? I ask myself questions like this all the time. Is he Robbie, I'm assuming? To celebrate my brother Leon's visit. I hate plays. Oh, come on. This is like working with actors for free, though. Amenable. Jackson? Amenable. Amenable. That's right. <laughs> She's the enforcer getting the talent in line. I like it. Love is all very well, but... You have to be sensible. I suppose you're going to be Arabella. I like this little girl. <laughs> what a theme. Sensible despite love. If you're going to be Arabella, then I'll be the director. Thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to do the prologue. I think you'll make a fine director and playwright. I'm rooting for you. Spontaneous Arabella who ran away with an extrinsic fellow. Look at the vocabulary. How old is she? Nothing. Is that Theon Greyjoy? Can we go for a swim now? Yes, 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 yes! No, I don't really think there's time! Oh, uh, you're just gonna have to do a one-man a one -man play, honestly. It's okay, it's okay, you're starting young, it's always hard to get that positive feedback, but trust me, just from hearing your the vocab you're using, I think it's a good, uh, a good start. Don't get stung! What is going on? <laughs> Why are they doing that outside? <laughs> what, did she lose a bet? 
Or do they have like a secret romance going on? She seems upset though, right? And she didn't take the flowers. I like the sound effect though of like the bee there. It just added something to that moment with her witnessing. I hope someone's watching them. I hope they can swim well. <laughs> okay, so she did take the flowers. I think. I think those are the same, right? Is this just a romance or is something else going on? Are you enjoying your book? No, not really. It gets better. What book is she reading? I want to know. Much more passionate. Talking about passionate things while uh, with two people who are attracted to each other. Okay. Leon's coming down today, did you know? Is she stressed out because he's such lower class than her and so she knows her family's going to disapprove or something? Let me help with that. I'm all right, thanks. Take the flowers. I'm all right. Take the flowers. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> Jeez. Careful. Oh yeah, be careful, please. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I understand the That's cool. That's really cool how they they jumped backwards like that. Okay, okay. That is very cool. Hey, that's deeper than I would have thought. Like I thought it was much more shallow. A very meaningful moment. I kind of like how they both looked away at the same time. Yeah, you can feel the tension, for sure. That was really interesting, like, how they showed those two scenes. And I'm wondering the significance of, like, showing it through the younger girl's perspective here. It seems like she has like a, almost some type of grudge against, uh, you know, James McAvoy's character, but I don't know why. What is it, Ron Dunny? Don't know, sir. Sir? Yeah. That's not Benedict Cumberbatch, is it? Is it? Rather. Whiskey? Please. It, it, what? He's in this movie? That's crazy. We have a ton of big actors in this movie. I've heard an awful lot about you. Likewise. Where are we putting him? In the blue room. Oh, I, I think I see the dynamics that are going on. We got Doctor Strange over here as the guy they're trying to set her up with because he's from the proper wealth. Who is bothering her when she's trying to take a nap? <laughs> I mean, just every scene, the scenery is just so incredible, honestly. I make a cocktail with crushed ice, rum, and melted dark chocolate. It's absolutely That sounds amazing. It really does. How dare you say that? Well, it's true. Jeez, don't do that to him. You must be the uh, cousins from the north. What are your names? Piero. Look, he's being friendly to the younger kids. That's cool. Your parents are absolutely wonderful people. That's quite clear. And they love you and think about you all the time. Okay, I like him. I like Paul. We went to see a show and I got them at Liberty's. What was the show? Hamlet. Didn't Benedict Cumberbatch play Hamlet in a play? I'm pretty sure he did. Well, I might be able to help you there if you can guess what I do for a living. You've got a chocolate factory. <laughs> Does he really? He does it, right? That's a joke, I'm assuming. Why should they get free sweets? He'll be fighting for that country. Oh. Why is he looking at her like that? Come on, tell me he's not some creep. Calling it the army ammo. Ammo, amass, mat. Top. Latin, wow, wow, look at her. Okay, I'm getting really bad vibes. Really bad vibes from him for sure. I'll have to bite it. Okay, someone keep an eye on him. Don't leave him alone with the kids, maybe. Why, what is this? What is this movie? I have no idea what this movie is doing. I thought this was a historical drama. <laughs> I mean, it is, you know, taking place during World War II, but I'm rooting for her just as a writer, an ambitious young girl. Is the music setting up for something very dramatic about to happen? I feel like we're going to lead towards, you know, a secret romance between them. And I'm guessing it's just seen as inappropriate based off their stations in life. And that's why there's such an obstacle to it. Or is there something else going on I'm missing? 
And the way they're cutting this back and forth between them, I think they're both very clearly like thinking about that moment and thinking of each other. Is she practicing like something to say to him? Okay, he's making this a love, a love letter here. Yeah, this is some dirty text messages going back and forth. I hope someone doesn't accidentally read that and then uh, that could lead to a lot of problems in this household, right? I feel rather lightheaded and foolish in your presence, C, and I don't think I can blame the heat. <laughs> yeah, definitely not the heat. Imagine. He's like, I thought it was just a hot day. That's all. <laughs> Ruby. Yeah, I think that's the better one to send than the dirty text messages, <laughs> at least at this stage. I'm a little bit concerned. You're not a bit like your father. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Son? Nothing. What was she going to say? I mean, if you thought the romantic tension between them was strong before, if they get all dressed up and have dinner together... Uh... Ryan, eh? Is that you? I hope he asks her about her play. You know, just to show that someone cares. I've been a bit of a fool handing it over myself. She's gonna read it. She's gonna read it. I don't know if that was a right, the smart decision on his part. I mean, of course she's gonna be curious. What? What is? What's going on? Wait, what? Did he did he put the wrong letter or something? Oh my god. I should have known they were going to switch it. That's what I was saying, man. How did you mess it up? He's quite a good egg, actually. And you say that about yeah. everyone. Oh no. It's a wonderful egg. Brian, eh? Here we are. My child. Oh, just talk about it. This is going to lead to so much drama. The twins been torturing me. Look. How awful. She's going to tell the friend. <laughs> it's me that's keeping him here. Is she okay? Great. I feel like they're going to start talking about him being inappropriate towards her, and then he's going to get in so much trouble. He's a sex maniac. That's right. What does he even do? I don't know. You ought to call the police. Oh, no, 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 no. If he found out, there's no knowing what he might do. All right. I mean, if you can't keep the secret yourself, the word's just going to get out. But they're, you know, she's such a young girl. They don't know any better. Uh, I feel... Rick. I feel like this story is going in a bad place. I just do. It's like, dude, why did you double check the letter before you handed it off? And why didn't you just deliver it yourself? Oh. What the heck? Is that an earring? What? This is like the romantic version of a horror movie. Like they're just slowly building up the suspense here. I mean, that is a really cool lighting setup here. Celia. Oh, shoot. Sorry about the letter. God, I'm so sorry. It was the wrong version. Yeah. It was never meant to be read. No. Well, I mean, I'm glad they at least talked about it as opposed to ignoring it and pretending like nothing happened. You know, I definitely think that's the right call. Did they just go right away? You do know what I'm talking about, don't you? I don't know if I exactly know. And so it begins, the forbidden romance, and of course they get caught. They get caught the very first day. <laughs> it's honestly like you can like really feel the years of buildup of attraction and tension between them with the passion that they're having in this moment. I love you. I believe them. You can really feel it. so interesting how this is shot too with like very close handheld and this beautiful lighting too <laughs> and here it comes the moment 
I mean, what do you do? What is she gonna do? She looks so scared and confused. <laughs> In high summer, my sister and I would never they're gonna be able to tell something's wrong. I feel like she, they're gonna tell that the little girl is bothered, you know? What do you say, Z? Does the hot weather make you behave badly? Uh, bad timing for that question. What sins have you committed today? I've done nothing wrong. As she stares at them. I'm afraid she's cried right. I had to pull them off her. How I got my war wound. Wait, hold on. Did he do something to her? Yes, it all turned into a bit of a wrestle, I'm afraid. Still no harm done, eh, Lola? He did, didn't he? Then where are the manners? Why do I have to go? Brani, you do as you're told. Or you There's too much tension in this scene, okay? I'm so worried. You guys are being so obvious and it's so risky. But I'm worried. Did, did, did Benedict Cumberbatch, like, do something to the little girl? I'm feeling like that's what they're implying. It's a letter. Give it to me. They've run away. Who has? The twins. We are going to run away. Because she was so worried, man. That's the mom from Succession. That's how I know that actress. That's some search parties. They can't have gone far. See, you come with me. Honestly, it's a good distraction because that dinner was so uncomfortable. I was so worried for everyone involved. Is she gonna find something? Like, did something happen to the twins? Are they gonna be dead or something? Like, how dark is this story gonna go? What? <gasps> Wait, what? I, I, did I not see? I, I want to go back. What? What did I see? What was it? I'm sorry. I didn't. I'm sorry. Who was it? Oh no. I saw him. Him, oh no, they're gonna think it's Robbie. They're gonna think it's Robbie. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. No, 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 no. I caught him attacking my sister in the library. I don't know what he'd have done if I had Oh been. my gosh, don't. No, 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 no. He pushed me to the ground. And then he put his hands over my Oh, I, I mean, I wish he would say it wasn't him. I don't think it was. I didn't see clearly myself. Because I couldn't say for sure. Well, I can. And I will. I mean, she probably was confused. I, I swear, it's Benedict Cumberbatch. He's a total creep. And, oh. <laughs> and oh, that's so horrible. That's so horrible for her. I know who it was. All of them stop at once. You know it was him? Or you saw him? Yes. Oh, shoot. Come on. I don't know how old she is, but I feel like she should know a little bit better. I saw him. I saw him with my own eyes. I mean, clearly she didn't. She saw him with her sister, but you could see why a young girl would be confused and would say that. But I feel like she has to know it isn't Robbie. So maybe the movie's called Atonement because James McAvoy is going to have to suffer horribly, you know, because of this, even though it's not a crime he committed. I feel horrible for her, though. I mean, jeez. And this sucks, too, because now, you know, Lord Benedict Cumberbatch is getting away with all his crimes. I know I shouldn't have opened it. No, you should not. But at least you've done the right thing now. Oh, pfft. It's such a... It's the worst case of misunderstanding possible. But I do think she shouldn't say that. She should say the truth. The full truth, you know. I'm sure she's scared and doesn't know any better. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's him, okay? The way he was looking at her earlier was disturbing. This movie is disturbing, honestly. I thought this was a very different type of movie. <laughs> I love the lighting in the background like that. Wait, so if he found the twins, it's obvious then he couldn't have been back with the other girl, right? I'm assuming he has no idea that every, what went down. He's very confused. I mean, I'm sure they're going to need more evidence than one girl saying that she thought she saw him in the dark. But I'm not familiar with all the legal proceedings back then, honestly. Really? He just gets arrested like that? I mean, they do. Are they, they are using the letter as evidence against him. But I mean, I don't think that should be enough. Oh, the poor mom. Okay, so she's witnessing all of this go down. Is there no part of her that doubts it? I mean, she knows that she kind of exaggerated the truth here. 
she's younger, but I think she's old enough to know that, you know, she should be more honest. Well, this is an extreme zoom in. And it looks like there's some tears in her eyes, which makes me think that she knows what she's doing is wrong, okay? Four years? We're just jump. Wow, that's a big time jump. Did not expect that. He seems like a brave soldier, too. Look at that, like encouraging everyone around him. Which is so, I, I don't know, like, what exactly happened. If he was arrested or if he served time or if he was forced, you know, to serve, maybe. Everything ends up a private. Not eligible for officer training if you join direct from prison. Oh, okay. Well, they just explained it right there. And for the record, the last thing I am is a toff. I don't even know what a toff is. But I, uh, that's so rough. That's so rough. But I think I would have done the same thing. I would, I think I'd rather do that than be in prison. Oh, dang. Whoa, we're jumping up. We're going back, we're going forth, all over the place. Six months earlier. Tell me they can talk discreetly. I feel so bad. Like, I, I hope that she doesn't think that he did that horrible crime. I'm sorry I'm late. I got lost. Hello. Hello. Oh, they were meant to meet. Okay, okay. I hope there's not this impossible barrier between them and they can at least communicate. Well, I'd say that's a good sign. Oh, is he gonna kind of shut that down because he knows that it's, you know, he's a bad fit for her in a way? Had I been allowed to visit you, had they let me every day, I would have been there every day. See, they have true love. In a library three and a half years ago, then I'm not sure. Robbie, look. I don't know. Come on, come on. You guys can still make it work. Why not? Come back to me. Say yes. Cecilia. I hope he doesn't die. Please don't die in the war. Oh, okay, good, good. They are, you know... A couple, right? Give him the Hey Mitch Hunger Games farewell. Stay alive. Those are my words of advice. Robbie, stay alive. He's gonna die, isn't he? This is just the type of movie that's gonna be tragic and the love story that could just couldn't work out. Did he forget to tell her something or is that just a romantic gesture like running after her like that? Beautiful scenery. There really are some amazing locations and shots in this movie. How serious is that wound? Is that a like bullet hole right through him? It can't be. He wouldn't be standing right there. Careful, you guys. It's too quiet. I'm worried they're going to get ambushed. Jeez. Oh my gosh. I don't... Who would kill all the students like that? I swear, James McAvoy can really just express so much with his face. He is a really talented actor. Can she swim? Or can she not swim? I don't get it. Oh, he was actually worried. She did that on purpose. Stupid child! You could have killed us both! Is that your idea of a joke? Did that influence her decision to say that because he was angry at her for doing that? I sure hope not. We fight in France and the French fucking hate us. Make me home, secretary. I'll sort this out in a fucking minute. I'm <laughs> in a minute. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. It's that simple. France and Belgium and whatever else they want. Who's fucking ever been to Poland? <laughs> I haven't, but... Think about it. Shh, another beautiful shot. That was such a uh, a flashback I did not expect. Just the Surrey Park at dusk in my best suit, swaggering on the promise of life. <laughs> Dude, you should be a writer. This is a great letter, well written. The story can resume. Can it? I feel like we're setting up for some tragic deaths here. And live. 
I hope you can. I hope you can. There's no chance that the sister that will die, is there? That he'll make it back safe, but she'll be dead? Fuck me. It's not something out of the Bible. It really is. It'd be great if you're not wounded. I'd order to leave the wounded behind. Is that serious? You have orders to leave the wounded behind? That's not right. No, it's not. They're killing all the horses? That was an impressive long take. I didn't notice when it had first started, but I've noticed it's been a long time since we've cut. And with like this gigantic set piece, that's not easy to pull off. Well, I'm feeling a bit hopeful with the music, and I'm still just enjoying this incredibly impressive shot. I, w I would love to know how many takes they did of this, and if this is truly, like, one take, or if they did some match cuts, you know, they, like, cleverly blended it. Either way, it's still really cool. Was this a real song? <laughs> I like it. So this is a full-on dream sequence, right? Take off your boots. I hope that doesn't mean he's injured because he's thinking of his mother. You know, it's... I think it was very real that a lot of soldiers would, you know, always call for their mom when they were dying. And the filter of the lighting also is so dreamlike. I think he's dying or he died. Look, you sure you're feeling all right? Never better. No, something's something's really wrong. That's right, girl. That's right. I like how his friend, I mean, thank goodness his friend is looking after him and at least helping him out. I, I can't tell if it's a trauma he's suffering or, you know, exhaustion or just the war. Is he going to burn the photo? Don't burn the photo. Or is he just looking at it? Dang, that is really cool with like the red lighting. I love you. It's like he's going through like all the critical moments in his life. You keep shouting. Some of the lads are getting a bit peeved. What? You're yelling in your sleep about your long lost love. The bunks are back. And a geezer from the buffs is marching us down at seven. Okay, good, good. Just come on. I know, like, you've been through so much, I can only imagine, but just make it through till the end, dude. Come on. Wake me before seven, would you think so much? I hope the story doesn't go like he makes it back home, but he's too traumatized by the war, and so he's never, never the same or something. Okay, another time jump here. By the way, the soundtrack of this film, I really, really like, especially this piano piece here. Which of you were responsible for pushing away the blankets today? I was, sister. I don't suppose you can tell us what you did wrong. <laughs> so she's a bit intense, but you know, maybe that just means she's good at her job. There is no Bryony. You're Taris. No, Jeez, Taris. okay. Is that understood? No first names allowed. <laughs> She doesn't look in great shape herself, either. She looks very haunted. I wonder if she's just been consumed by guilt. The RAF continues to give all the support in its power. The I wonder if she'll cross paths with Robbie, possibly. At least then she could apologize to him. Oh, does she still write? Good for her. I'm glad she's keeping that up. Don't panic, it's only me. <laughs> she has to do it in secret. <laughs> Romance. She maybe she's writing about a romance. Can I look? I, I'd rather you didn't. It's private. Two figures by a fountain. Oh, okay. So it's gonna. It's definitely based off some of the things that happened in her past. It's complicated. <laughs> it is. I. It is because the real version is complicated. I can't escape from what I did and what it meant. That's true. That is true. That's that's the problem with making a mistake that huge. See, please write and tell me we can meet. And I can't even, you know, I do appreciate how she's trying to reach out and apologize to her sister, but 
I can understand Cecilia not wanting to get back to her as well. What has happened? That's what's going to end up happening, right? She's going to take care of uh, James McAvoy real quick. All right, what a sad scene for everyone, you know? Like, it's not easy. Oh, it is, it is. They're going to reunite. How is this going to go down? Oh, no. Okay. That was wrong. <laughs> I think it's going to happen, though, right? For sure. Hopefully, Robbie's not too badly injured. Oh. I feel so bad for these men. They sacrifice so much. And these women, like, they are absolutely critical. Like, this is... This actually, I, I like that she chose to do this. That's a very interesting shot and transition there. I want to know who directed this movie. There's a soldier in bed 13. Go and sit with him for a minute. Hold his hand. Is it going to be Robbie? It is. Come on. It's a blue comfortable conversation there. I hope it is too. I hope he gets any comfort he can in these moments. I mean, what what a what a nice thing to do to someone for someone, you know, to be there and comfort them in these moments. Stand up, masters. But how long was she there? I can wash the blood off your face. Shouldn't you be busy doing other stuff? <laughs> Not like Watching, you know, a nurse comfort someone as they die? Is that something they would do really as well? Like, would someone be surrounded in a red curtain if they were in their final moments? Join together. I know it was him. Let him now speak. Is she gonna say something? I saw him. Oh no, she actually saw that it was the other guy? You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. No wonder she feels so guilty. I thought she was just confused. This is... I can't believe she would have done that. So she did it because she was jealous of her sister because she had a crush on Robbie. I mean, it, it makes a lot more sense, actually, why she feels... Oh. Callis! Stop! What is she going to say? I have to talk to you. I mean, I don't know what this conversation is going to be like. I really don't. Come on, please just cut to Robbie alive after the war. At least, as long as that happens, you know, we'll have something good after all the suffering they both went through because of her lie. And what can you say besides I'm sorry? And it seems inadequate after everything that's happened, but. Wait, is that him? Tell me it's Robbie. Please tell me he's alive and at least they're together. Is she going to have a conversation with him and apologize directly? Once again, the sound design of like the tension with the water boiling is done very effectively. I maybe at least apologize to him. I honestly don't know what to do. I'm like sitting here like, what do you do in this situation? And what's made you so certain uh, growing, up. growing up? I was 13. Oh, she was 13? She was definitely old enough to know the difference between right and wrong. I thought she was younger than that. Thanks to you, they were able to close ranks and throw me to the fucking wall! Look at me! Look at me! Look at me! Yeah, De Robbie, don't do anything stupid. Please, come on, please. It, it's a horrible thing that happened, but, you know, at least have a happy life with Cecilia. That was such an interesting look from her, right? Is she envious of, like, the love they have, possibly? There are some things you're going to do for us. I mean, what can she do? I, I do think she has to at least tell the family so at least they know that he didn't do anything. And You'll go to your parents as soon as you can. And you'll tell them everything they need to know. To be yeah, yeah. Lulu won't be able to testify against him now. Oh, that's right, because they're married. He's immune. You still should come clean and just tell the truth, even if legally you can only do so much. Just get the word out, you know? Just do as we've asked of you. Write it all down, and then leave us be. Will, I promise. Okay, good. I mean, it was a terrible thing that she did, but at least she's 
is genuinely sorry and just do everything you can to make it better. And at least Robbie's alive. Thank, I thought for sure he was going to die. Franny Tallis, your new novel, Your 21st, is called Atonement. Wait, what? I mean, she has that same haircut for how many years? Dang, so is this whole movie kind of like her as an older woman reflecting on what she did in her life? It seems like she still feels guilty for what she did, but, you know, if she truly did everything she could to help clear his name... Are you retiring? I'm dying. Oh, wow. It's so interesting, the background is completely faded into black as we zoomed in closer. I wrote several drafts as far back as my time at St. Thomas's Hospital during the war. Oh, is this like a tell-all story about everything that happened? I couldn't any longer imagine what purpose would be served by it. By the truth? By what's very served by honesty. By honesty. What do you mean? Why? What's wrong with the honesty? I don't get it. So the scene in which I confessed to them is imagined. And if that could never have happened. Oh, don't tell me he died. Robbie Turner died. Oh, great. They have a, a happy-ish ending and then they have a plot twist to show that it's all tragic and horrible. And she didn't even go and apologize to her sister? They should rename this movie Depressing, not Atonement. But was everything else real besides her going back? Like, did everything else go down the way it's just shown in the movie? Because she was killed. She dies too? Are you serious? I mean, talk about the consequences of her lie. I mean, it already was huge, but... Ever since, I've always felt I prevented... I mean, you don't want to shoulder all the blame, but you definitely affected their lives in a very negative way. What satisfaction could a reader derive from an ending like that? Yeah, instead you decide to give the ending in the movie version and depress me. <laughs> Gave them their happiness. I mean, the fictional characters. It's so sad. It really is so sad because they were such a great couple and their love was so strong and passionate and true. And they would have had such, such happiness in their lives that, of course, they never got to. I feel like this, this story is kind of like a warning story, actually. Yeah, only the book ending had, had it go like this. That's how the movie ends? Wow, okay. I mean, <laughs> this movie was not what I expected at all. All right, so that is Atonement. And just as I was clicking off, I saw in the description that it's based off a novel. And I was about to say that. It really feels like a, a book adaption. And it was very interesting. I mean, not, not exactly what I expected. I expected maybe more of just a... a I, don't, I don't even know exactly what I expected. But it, it surprised me in multiple ways. I think what stood out to me the most, actually, though, was the directing. I think there were some very different choices. I mean, some of the shots were really gorgeous. I think it seemed like there was some type of filter or some effect that was used, particularly with the lighting, that had this kind of glowing, magical effect to it. And given the the story that unfolded i think that was a very fitting type of visual aesthetic like i thought it worked very well especially with you know kind of with the magic of the romance uh you know child and imagination and then especially finding out at the end that she fabricated some of the closure that we got in that one scene um, but it's pretty, a pretty depressing story very depressing um, I, don't, I don't know what to think of everything that went down i mean it's it's horrible that you have the lives of these two people who are so deeply in love be ruined because uh, of Bryony's lie. And 
I was so much more understanding of of where she was coming from. You know, I I really didn't blame her at all. I mean, it was a mistake, but I just looked at it as like a child's mistake because you could see like she seemed so scared when she saw her sister. And so I just thought, like, of course she would assume, you know, she sees Lola, her friend, getting abused. And she she assumes, like, she jumps to the conclusion, like, oh, this guy is, is freakish, kind of. So that would make sense how a child could be confused. But I also thought she was younger. I didn't realize she was 13. <sighs> I mean, you should. But the fact, uh, the real surprise is just the fact that she clearly saw that it was somebody else and recognized that guy. And I just... The way that the movie unfolded, and I'd, I'd love to hear people's thoughts about it, anyone who read the book or you know has watched this movie and digested it multiple times, because I also feel like, I don't know what it was, and I'll be curious as well, Like, if was anyone else the first time they watched this a little bit confused or didn't follow all the plot points? I feel like, and I feel like just even right now that I missed something in this movie, but and what I was going to say is I'd just love to hear people's thoughts about Bryony, you know, like her mistake her lie which as we saw essentially ruined two people's lives and you could almost say that it, she ruined her own life as well because i don't think she ever escaped the guilt over what she did especially you know seeing her in her at the end of her life you know this is clearly at the forefront of her mind and i can just imagine the regret that she has i mean clearly making her final novel about that whole incident and everything that she did. And to me, I guess a, a big takeaway is um, it's kind of a warning story about how there are certain mistakes you can make in life that have just these permanent effects. And I like, I like the reveal at the end as depressing as it is because there is a cleanness in a lot of fictional stories, whether they're happy or sad. I feel like a lot of times just to make a satisfying narrative, you know, as someone, an aspiring writer myself, you know, I never uh, have tried to capture reality as it actually is because reality is just so messy and boring a lot of the times. So you have to kind of formulate things for entertainment and to fit the themes that you want and the ideas you're trying to convey. And so for having a story that the ending is revealed that the kind of the cleanness of her ending, her trying to make amends in that way is shown that that never happened. And that's, it's very sad, but I think it really thematically kind of highlights the difference between fiction and reality and how these cathartic events oftentimes only happen in fiction. And when you do something that has terrible consequences and effects, especially when it affects other people. I think that's part of the difficulty of the situation, too, because it's not like, you know, Bryony made a mistake as a child and then her life suffered because of it. I mean, it did. But what makes it so impossible to make up for is the fact that it, you know, tarnished the lives of people that she cared about. But she can't make it up to them in a way. And so it's interesting. And the fact that the movie is, is titled Atonement, I'm going to assume the book that it's based off of is as well. I think that really is, at least for me, the central theme that I'm kind of drawing out of this movie. And I think, I don't think I have the answer, and I don't even know if this story is presenting an answer, but it raises the question in my mind. Do, you know, are there mistakes you can make in life where there is no complete atonement possible? And what do you do if you make one of those mistakes? And that's why I kind of take it as, as a cautionary tale. Now, it is very interesting, and I also think it's very meaningful that the mistake she made was, you know, she's 13, I, I really think she should know better than to outright lie, especially about something as serious. And, and obviously she didn't understand fully, you know, she st it's not like she was an adult doing that, but... You know, when when we had that imaginary speech from James McAvoy, from Robbie, you know, confronting her, you could, I, I, I see where he's coming from, and you can really sense the pain in his voice, you know, like, what are you expected, like, not to be held accountable for anything until you turn 18? Um, and I don't know, I also don't know how I feel the fact that she she doesn't admit the truth until the very end of her life. 
I think that's, I think it's a normal progression. A lot of people, if they make mistakes in life or they have regrets, you know, I think that comes to your attention oftentimes when you're in that last chapter of your life. Because of course, I just, it, I think the reality of your own mortality weighs on you and is much more present in your mind as you age. And so for her, you know, to come clean with the truth after she has this fatal diagnosis, it it just, it's so sad. It's It's so scary. I mean, I would hate to be in that situation where you're coming clean and admitting to something terrible that you did in that last chapter of your life when the people that were affected are gone. I, I don't know. Like I said, it, it's definitely not a feel-good movie, and it's also tragic in a way where, and that's why I think thematically this really is about the the messiness and the imperfection of moral dilemmas in the real world. You know, there is no neat little bow to just wrap things up for a satisfying ending. But I don't know. I... I would I would hope um that she at least tried to clear his name even after he died. I mean it's obviously too late you could say you know whatever but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. These are, I I'm a, I'm, I feel like I'm drawing a bit of a blank and I don't know exactly what to think about this movie. It was not what I expected. Was anyone else surprised when they watched this movie? I mean, the thing that I kind of want to just fall back on is how great are James McAvoy and Keira Knightley? You know, on a more lighter note than the heaviness of this movie. I, I really enjoyed their performances. I was rooting for their characters the entire time. I thought they had this this real intensity about the passion between them. And I liked that, you know. I also feel like there was a bit of a commentary going on about the time period as well, where there is a, a, a rigidity and a strictness over, you know, love and passion. And I think that was definitely influential about why, you know, Robbie was locked up based off, you know, basically an inappropriate love note. And inappropriate, you know, like... There's there's nothing wrong between two consenting adults having some dirty messages back and forth the way they were. But when it was presented as evidence, you know, to the parents and made public, I think because of the the period in history that it took place in, that was used as something that got Robbie locked up. At least that's the way that I interpreted that. I almost it's it's a strange thing. I feel like I should empathize with Brian more, but I kind of don't. Does anyone else have that impression from the movie? I mean, my my actual like feelings, like thinking about her character is, wow, um, you know, I hope I never make a mistake like that in my life, you know, where when I reach that final chapter, I look back with regret and there's nothing I can do to fix it. But for her character as well, I don't I don't know. I guess I, I I'm I'm more I feel much worse for Robbie and Cecilia than I feel bad for Bryony, if that makes sense. And I don't know. I, I'd love to hear people's thoughts as well, especially about her character, because she is a very interesting character. And I don't know. I, the way it seemed to me too, as well, like her motivation to lie about Robbie, like when they showed that flashback with her like getting saved by him in the lake, the way that I took it is she, of course, like Maybe she was kind of jealous of the attention and she felt confused, like why he would like her sister and not her. And you can, you know, the confusion of a 13 year old girl, I feel like that's all very understandable. But that almost implies that some jealousy was the real motivation for her to lie like that. So I don't know. I, I don't know. But. Love to hear people's thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, thank you to everyone, as always, for watching. Like I said, if you do want to watch the full unedited reaction to this movie, any of my movies are out on Patreon. Next week's classic movie reaction. Um, not sure at the time recording what it's going to be, but that will be out next week. Thank you to everyone for watching. And as always, remember, be active, be mindful, and be a hero. <laughs>